Okay, hi everyone, my name's Katie Bliss. Um, I'm an agroecologist um, and I also work with the agroecology project um, and with research with the Organic Research Centre into diverse cropping systems. So working together with farmers in their fields, looking at how to make this work in practice. Um, we're here in the agroforestry, which Tim will tell us a little bit about um, further on, but I'm going to take us back to basics really. So forgive me if you know all this already. Um, but just talk about agroecology and what that is. Um, um, so there's lots of different definitions out there, but to me, agroecology is about how we work with ecological processes um, in farming systems um, and use those to better design and manage um, food and farming systems. So it's looking at the, the what we do with it afterwards bit as well. Um, so that's processes such as cycling of nutrients, looking at the interactions between soils, plants, insects, animals, um, looking at processes such as the predation of pests by natural enemies, suppression of weeds and so on. Um, and so over the past 60 years or so, um, I do also work with our family farm, I didn't mention that bit. Um, so over the last 60 years or so, there's been markets and policies have really encouraged us to use chemicals in place of lots of those ecological processes. Um, so agroecology is about going back, understanding what those processes are, um, farmers learning and researchers learning together about how we can be better utilising those processes in our farming systems to avoid many of the problems that we're seeing when we've been working against them. So things like water pollution, the loss of biodiversity, declining soil health, and the simple fact that that system just isn't working anymore, the chemicals aren't working anymore, we've got to do something different. Um, so uh, there's a lot of farmers that are working towards new farming systems, working with these ecological processes. Um, and that's not necessarily, it's not associated with any particular labels. It's, it's about the, the learning in the field um, and it's not about any one particular method. Um, but there are common principles um, so one is around enhancing diversity, um, and that goes from at a, a micro scale in the soil um, through to the, the plants and the animals and the insects in, in the environment and the interaction between all of those factors um, and how and yeah, providing habitat for, for, for beneficials in, in the environment. Um, and it's also about cycling of resources and minimising losses, trying to keep things in the system and, and reducing waste by, by find, finding a use with it within the system, uh, water and energy management. And it's also about multifunctionality. So looking at rather than having a, a system with one particular output, looking at how, how can we build in multiple functions? So not just production, but also look at how can we build a system where it's building nutrients, where we're providing habitat, um, we're providing shade for livestock and so on. Um, and so there's a whole toolbox really of, uh, of practices that, that farmers are using. There's no <coughs> one silver bullet and it's really about farmers choosing what works for them in their context. Um, and the agroforestry here is a good example of that. Um, but overall, it's it's about getting a greater understanding of biology and interactions between different components in the system, as I've said, and observing, monitoring and learning about those. Um, so learning about your weeds and their biology, when are the weak points, identifying, being able to identify the pests and their predators, creating habitat for them, getting a spade out, digging the soil, having a look what's happening there. Um, and so agroforestry is, is one of those. So it, um, t as I said, Tim will explain more about what's happening here, but it's about firstly about trying to make best use of land um, and solar energy, um, maximizing, um, in this case, we've got livestock, we've got poultry in with the, the trees, um, providing sh shade and shelter eventually, um, and minimizing the, the losses basically and providing multiple crops. Um, other practices are things like minimum tillage, cover crops, um, integrating animals back into livestock systems, looking at genetics, um, as uh, Richard's been talking about, intercropping, which is some work that I do to, with um, multiple crops, so growing more than one crop together. Um, so there's a whole range of practices and that's something that, that um, we feature on agroecology and work with different researchers and farmers to bring together. Um, so we see this as a kind of uh, alternative approach and agroecological innovation approach um, and it requires quite a different path to the one we've been on 
Um, it's knowledge intensive rather than product intensive. Um, and that means that we're handing power back to the farmers. Um, but it does mean that they need to learn from each other and also from researchers. Um, biological systems are inherently complex. Um, so there's still a lot more to learn about about the soil, about these interactions between different components of the system and some of these practices and the impact and where they work and, and where they don't. Um, and much um, and, and that's the challenge really, uh, because the the funding for independent research into into this kind of practice, um, much of the innovation is happening in farmers' fields. Uh, they're they're the ones that are, are trying these things out. So it needs to be a participatory approach, working together with the farmers, um, bringing them together in groups. So things like innovative farmers, if you've come across that, um, we also need a stronger network of independent advice um for for no, and knowledge exchange in the field um so that's both with farm farm events bringing farmers together um and also online with um things like social media um at agricology we've got a hub where we bring together uh farm farmers experience researchers experience um and also on social media um and we really believe that it's important that this is an inclusive approach um, uh, for all farmers and growers that might be at different stages on that transition and might but anyone that's interested to to farm more sustainably and use more ecology in their farming system um, as I mentioned before it's also worth noting that this shift to more agro ecological production systems will require innovation in the value chain um, it will requires markets and consumers to um, to recognize the the real cost of food, to value the real cost of food, to, to be willing to adapt their diets, um, and also value chains that can uh, that can cope with smaller quantities of more diverse crops, more direct relationships between consumers and, and farmers. So we need policies that will support this. Um, so yeah, in summary, um, agroecological innovation has huge potential for transforming food and farming systems. Um, and huge implications for reducing <laughs> pollution, climate change mitigation, protecting biodiversities. Um, but we, we need policies that will support it and more investment um, for this independent research and knowledge exchange.